So implant stability varies in different directions with quality and quantity of the surrounding bone. It may sound a simple and obvious thing, but it's terribly important. And in the two lectures we've just heard, it really highlights the significance and importance of understanding that parameter and the difference it can mean. So what we see here is an implant in bone, and it's in the mandible. The stiffness and stability of that implant is not the same all the way around. It's very different in one direction to the other. And that's a simple principle which applies in mechanics and mechanical engineering. But in order to fully describe that, and in order to fully understand what we mean, we can't use a single number. If we measure stability around the implant, we can see that clearly it's lower across the implant, where it's easier to bend the mandible. From the mesial distal length, it's going to be a lot stiffer. It's not only in a simple site like that, where overall the implant is very stable, but it becomes really important in the cases we've just heard about with extraction sockets and immediate loading, where the bone to implant contact is not uniform and it's not symmetrical. We can be the best clinicians in the world and insertion talk can give us an idea, but we can't really predict the stability of that implant at the time of placement and it is important to know. So, for example, let's look at this, uh, this molar extraction site. And we're looking to place an implant somewhere in the septum. And if we measure the ISQs, the first mode is 65. But then we look at it, and the second mode is much less. It's 45. Those two numbers are not the same. If you're using Ostel and if you're using ISQ, then those two numbers should be referred to separately. Don't average them, don't divide them, treat them separately. And again, I was so pleased to see the previous speakers doing that because the difference is so important. What that's telling us is that this implant is not going to be symmetrical. And because of that lack of symmetry, we see it classically in the sinus region where we saw one with, uh, I think Jeff had three and 17. It shows that there's an imbalance and it's the lower number that's really very, very important. 